Uh, the software package I'm going to show you guys now is called Stream Bend. It is Salvini's solution to programming a panel bender in an automatic yet interactive type of way. All right, okay. I'll show you now. Okay, we're set. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're simply going to come inside and we're going to find a 3D file. It can be a 3D or it can be a 2D with bin lines. We're going to drag it into the software. First thing that's going to happen is it's going to convert that 3D file into a sheet metal part. It's going to flatten it out for me. Okay, now this part isn't overly complicated, but we do have Oh. Safety hems, mm -hmm. some negative bins, some positive bins at 90 degrees. We have a couple of 45s. Okay, so on an actual press break, this would be a lot of flipping the part up and over and creating the hems on a, a secondary operation, so it would take a long time to produce. Okay, yep. so I'm going to show you how to program this as quick as possible. All I have to do is I go to the top, I click on my references, which of you think of references, they're like the back gauges of a press break, right? Oh, right. Okay. So here's our, our left reference, here's our right reference. This is our rotator clamp, so this is what's going to hold down the part okay. to make the actual bins. These are pinchers, so this is a P4 machine, so this shows where I'm going to grab the part to pull it into the panel bender machine automatically. Mm -hmm. This back here is our Z pusher. So this actually pushes the part into those references and measures. Ah, okay. So that if you put a part in incorrect or the wrong size part, it's going to tell you it's not correct versus what you have in the program, okay? Next thing I do is I go to my bending sequence. It will automatically give me a bending sequence, an order of operations. So it's gonna do this side first. Then it's gonna come over. It's gonna do this side this side and then this side. Everything is out, farthest out in, okay? Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my blink order and regrips and it's going to show me a visual representation of where my clamp is and what my tooling segments is going to be. Ah, okay. And those are the, uh, that's the bending area in your yep. S1 there? Uh, for actually our P4. Yep. So this yep. is the bending area for our P4 and yep. these tools are always on the machine. Yeah. They never come off. Oh, I just meant uh, S4 on the... Uh, Side 4. Yeah. Sorry. Or, or S1. Not, uh, S1. Not, S1. So, yeah. Up. That's, that's, that's getting bent yep. in this. Thing. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of right. separates it out and says this is side one, this yeah. is side two, side three, and side four. Okay. Okay. Uh, quick, quick question for yes, you. Yes, sir. It, it has already gone through the uh, compile process, so you know this is a valid part by the time it gets to. Nope, at this point we don't know. What we're oh, doing okay. right now uh -huh. is we're going through step by step uh, uh -huh. to find a solution for my referencing for what my order of operations is going to okay. be. So how I'm going to do it and my tooling setup. So it does everything automatically for me. Okay. And I just go through and I can simply see what's going to happen. Uh -huh. So I can go to a different view I if see. I want to. Okay. And I can step it through and kind of see how everything's going to come together at the very end. <laughs> okay. Interactively. Very interactive. And you're, right? you're controlling by the number of clicks. Yep. I'm yeah. just clicking. Yep bend after bend to see exactly where I'm at, okay? So from the top view, let me go to a, a nice top view, you can see the resolution, which means how close we are with our bending tool to our flanges, right? So our already, already formed flanges. Yep. If everything is good, all I have to do is go here, I write the program, so I'm going to write and compile. Write and compile means it's going to write the code of the program. Compile means it's going to run it through and make sure we're not going to have any type of crazy collisions. Yeah. And if everything is done and works out fine at the very end, it shows me information about this actual part. Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. Gives me my X dimension, my Z dimension, my thickness, my weight. But here's something that's valuable. My yeah. execution time, 44 seconds. Oh, okay. So to do this part, with three hems on three different sides, positives and negatives, uh, flipping of the part on a panel bender is 44 seconds. Wow. If you did it on a press break, you would be number one, not very happy, 
because yep. of all the flipping. But number two, you'd have to have multiple setups and be a lot of flipping, rotating of the part. So this is a very, very time-saving process. And with the with the stops, there's no uh, guesswork about is this going to be accurate or not. If it's against the stops, you're good. Yep. There's yeah. there is no guesswork in it. Yeah. It's very very easy to understand, very easy to see. Okay. Well, wow, 44 seconds. Okay. 44 seconds is the time for that. Now, I'm going to fold this up and I'm going to create a nice PDF. Um, that I can send out to the machine so that the operator of the panel bender can get a representation of what it's going to look like. Here's what it's going to look like. This is like. what it's going to look like when it's formed. Okay. So here's my flat pattern and here's my form pattern. Cool. This image is the same image I have here. If I don't like the image I have, I can rotate it around. I can update my report. It's going to create the new image. Okay. So just in case you want to have different view, so that the operator can really understand. Mm -hmm. There it is. This report, uh, it can create a barcode, a data matrix, a QR code at the top. Again, so the programmer, I'm sorry, the operator of the machine can simply scan and go. Mm -hmm. It gives me information about this part. It shows me a, a exploded view of my references. So where my my references, we'll call it back gauges for press rate yeah. people, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Down here, it tells me some information. So my base dimensions is 60.08 by 20 inches. Okay. So that tells me that that's my form box dimension. And then my unfolded dimensions are 65 by 26.5. So this is my flat pattern. Oh, okay. right, right. So right. our form box versus our flat pattern. Yep. It tells me the thickness, the number of sides, the number of bins, 19 bins. 19 bins. There's 44 19 seconds. bins. 44 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that, that's assuming that's already been, <clears throat> excuse me, cut out. Uh, the blank has been cut the out blank by is, laser. Or, yep. And yeah. it is on the P4. The P4 comes down. The yeah. time is when it clamps it, yep. the part, to the time that it releases it. Okay. okay. Got it. Uh, it tells me the number of positive bins, the number of negative bins, the weight of my panel, again, the, the raw material it's made out of. And then down here, it shows me some profile views. Oh, yeah. So if I want to kind of see what side one is, side two is, side three is, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then down here, it says for profile number one, what are my bins, what are my angles, what are my lengths? So that the operator of the machine, if he wants to check, do a, a, a quick check, he can yeah. have this with him. He can look and see, make a quick measure and say, yes, we're good. Okay. Great. So, one last question for you uh, before we uh, start the last video, and that is, uh, I interrupted you with questions along the way. How much, uh, how much time would the uh, software portion of this take before we, before we start the actual job? Mm -hmm. uh, it took longer because I'm yeah. yapping at the mouth. Yeah, if you actually, let's do this. Yeah. I say we do this. We start at the very beginning, yeah. and I just go through the process like I normally would. And I'll be quiet. And we'll just kind of see how long it takes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so that seemed like it was less than 30 seconds, maybe. Oh, yes, by far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and we can actually, we can do automatic. So if I can d delete, I will do it again, and we'll, we'll just click the automatic mode and see what it does. Okay. Okay. Drag it in. Auto elaborate means solve everything for me. Yeah. Don't I don't want to see anything that I'm going to do. Try to come up with a solution for me. Bending sequence is what it's doing right now. So it's coming up with the, the best bending sequence it can. Right? So it's going to go through some revisions okay. and see if maybe it can speed up the process by doing it a different way. Okay. At the very end. <clears throat> I'm Some done. algorithms are at work right now. Many algorithms. Yeah. It's trying different orientations, trying different sequencing, and at the end, yeah. comes up with the best and solution. And that's really cool. So that's not only all done, but it's optimized. It's optimized, yeah. absolutely. Yep. All right. And 
you are not using AI in this, so for folks who are scared of it, you don't have to be scared of it. You don't have it's, to be scared. it's algorithms, yeah. yes, <laughs> and it's automatic as can be. Yeah, and, and the whole purpose was to make it to where someone sitting behind a computer can yeah. actually stand, understand how the machine's going to run it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can see what's going to do before it does it. Yes. That and the prevents, operator gets that info absolutely. right after that. Prevent so, as, yeah. as much uh, rework as humanly possible. Yeah. And now, let's say a few words too about uh, the interoperability of the different software programs that Salvinini offers, right? Mm -hmm. The fact is, you, you can take that same info and go across your different packages. Absolutely. The same, you can take the same file and you can put it through multiple packages mm -hmm. and you can program multiple machines with the same file. Or like I showed you before, where we're doing the batch elaboration process, mm -hmm. that's where I would start. Let's say that I have 100 parts that I have to program for multiple machines. Mm -hmm. I take those 100 parts, put it in the software, elaborate, say I want to create it on a laser, I want to create it on a punch, I want to create it on a panel bender, I want to create it on a press break, let it crunch and come out with the results at the end. If it does 95, 96 of those parts that you have, that you mm -hmm. originally put in, and there's a couple parts that maybe have some issues that you have to fix because, you know, geometries or whatever it might be. Yeah, metal flaw, something. Yeah. You're, you're doing 5% of the work versus 100%. Yeah. That's major time savings. Yeah. Right? Not including that you don't have to sit and babysit. Mm -hmm. You just batch, mm -hmm. let it go, see the results at the end. If there's something that needs to be repaired, you fix that. So you're, you're saving a lot of time versus the way that we've done it for, you know, ever up until this point where it's a lot more manual intervention. Yeah. Automate as much as possible. Simplify. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you.